Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 2 of our Cucumber with Selenium video series. And in this video, we will be talking about getting started with Cucumber. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 1 since this part is going to be a continuation of that particular part. And as I already said, we have splitted the Cucumber with Selenium video series into two sections. Section 1 is going to be dealing completely about Cucumber and Section 2 is going to be talking about Cucumber with Selenium. Alright, so let's get started. So as I already said in our previous video, we are going to be talking about this slide to save our planet Earth. So let's all help to save tree, water and energy to save our motherly Earth for our future generation. Cucumber as said, Cucumber is an tool which helps behavioral driven development. We discussed about this in our previous video. And Cucumber as a tool support different language implementations like Java, JavaScript, PHP, Ruby and C Sharp. It's more like Selenium. If you take Selenium, Selenium has got different language bindings like Java, C Sharp, PHP, Perl or Ruby. Similarly, Cucumber as a tool has also different language implementation like Java, JavaScript, PHP, Ruby, etc. And for the C Sharp implementation, we have already discussed about Specflow a lot greater detail in our Exit Automation channel. So you can see this particular playlist of our Exit Automation channel has got close to 25 videos related to Specflow and which is nothing but a Cucumber implementation of C Sharp. So please go ahead and watch that particular video series for a clear understanding of how Cucumber implementation of C-Sharp works in Specflow. So which language implementation are we going to discuss in this series then? As you guessed right, we are not going to talk about C-Sharp implementation once again. Rather, we are going to talk about Java implementation. And it is after a pretty long time in Exit Automation channel, we are doing a video series on Java language. Well. Exit Automation still loves Java. So installation prerequisite. So before getting started with the Cucumber, we need to have a very intelligent IDE. As we have already discussed in most of our video series in Exit Automation channel on C Sharp, we use Visual Studio a lot, one of the most intelligent IDE ever. And IntelliJ is trying to build a most intelligent IDE for Java as well as they have ReSharper for Visual Studio, IntelliJ IDE for Java is really really intelligent. It's trying to bridge the gap between Eclipse IDE, NetBeans IDE of Java and trying to make IntelliJ IDE as more sophisticated IDE pretty close to Visual Studio IDE. So we are going to use IntelliJ IDE in this video series along with Windows 10 operating system. But you can use any IDE you like, but I personally prefer IntelliJ IDE is very very good. Along with that, we are gonna need some of the following jar files like Cucumber Core, Cucumber Java, Cucumber Java Dep, which is nothing but the Java dependency, and Cucumber JVM, Gherkin, and Selenium jar files. Of course, these are going to be something which we will be adding in our next section of this particular video series. But yes, we are going to deal with some of these jar files. So we need these jar files as well while starting to work with the Cucumber. So how are we going to install or reference these jar files? If you are from Visual Studio background and you have already watched the video series on our Exit Automation channel on Specflow, we referenced all the related deals via NuGet package or NuGet package repository. Whereas in the Java world, we can easily do via Maven public repository. So they also got a different repository which stores all the jar files. But Java has many different ways of referencing the jar files. You can publicly download the jar files from the website and you can add that as a reference as you do in C Sharp. But Maven public repository is very very cool and many people are using Maven public repository and it's like a very very plain simple file which is called as POM file. So if you add the dependencies in that POM file, all the jar files required will be downloaded for you. Right? So let's start installing IntelliJ IDE in our machine and start creating a simple project in our IntelliJ IDE. So for that, I'm going to flip to installation mode. 
I have already downloaded the IntelliJ IDE in my machine. So I'm going to start installing the IDE. So all I'm going to do is just click, just click next, 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 because I'm really not interested in performing a lot of different stuff. So I'm just going to specify which kind of IntelliJ shortcut I require. So I personally prefer 64 bit and then create the association with the Java and just hit install. So this will install the IntelliJ IDE. But before that, I also want to see what version of Java I'm currently running in my machine. I really don't know if I have Java or not in my machine. That's great news, I actually have Java. So, and let me quickly see if I have the environment variable set in here because this environment variable is very, very important while you start working with Maven. So I am going to see environment variable as well in my machine and see if there is something which is not missing out there. So if I can see if there is any Java underscore home, of course they don't have one. So I need to add it as well. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to go to my C colon program files java and i have these two versions which is the one which, which i'm interested in is the jdk so i'm just going to uh, copy the the folder here for the jdk i think i should copy till the bin folder I'm not very sure about that that's what i said java is a very very orphan language for exit automation at least but from now on, we are really going to focus on Java as well because there are so many people coming and asking about the Java thing. So that's why this video series is all about. So I'm just gonna add that, cool. But this adding of environment variable is really not gonna help anyways because you also need to add that in the path. I completely forgot that. So let's see if I could add that as well. All right, here you just add new percentage Java let's go home percentage slash bin. So this will actually uh, get me to the bin folder. There we go. Sometimes you need to restart a machine to get this environment variables being affected into your machine. So see if it actually helps if the Java home path is not being set. So I'm just going to run the IntelliJ IDE community edition right now. So you can see that I'm running the community edition to CE, which is a kind of free version as you have in Visual Studio as well, right? Visual Studio have a community version. Similarly, IntelliJ has released a community version as well. And it says that you want to uh, import the setting from a previous IntelliJ IDE. I didn't have any IntelliJ IDE in my machine. So I'm just going to hit OK which is not going to import any setting for me. And there seems to be some kind of privacy policy. I'm going to say OK, because I'm not going to breach any of it. And I personally prefer Dragula, which is nothing but the black color thing. So I'm just going to take that, which is going to feel me like a Visual Studio. So I'm going to hit Next. And it's going to ask you some of the cool thing. So it's going to ask you, like, uh, do you want to tune your task? Are you going to add some version control things in there? Or do you want to add some of the uh, some of the other stuff like plugins and all those things? I'm gonna just skip this and I'm gonna maybe leave it. See next feature plugins. Uh, no, start using IntelliJ IDE. So there we go. So I'm not installing any of the plugins right now. You can install the plugin directly by going inside the IntelliJ IDE after opening it. So don't worry about it yet. And then here we go. We are going to create a new project here in the IntelliJ IDE. So this is going to bring the new project window and I'm going to select Java and I'm just going to hit next. So it is asking me that there is no SDK assigned yet. So there is the problem. So I'm going to say yes. And oops, what is that? If I hit next, do you want to create a project with no SDK assigned? So let me choose the SDK. I've just nothing but the JDK and it is going to search directly for me and it's going to go over here and it's asking this JDK do you want to select? And I'm going to say OK. So now it has pointed to Java version 1.8 which is so intelligent. I'm going to hit next and then 
you can choose the create project from the template which is nothing but the command line app and hit next and this is going to bring you uh, a project name that you want to enter very very cool simplified version of ui then compared to the eclipse ide because i really love eclipse ide a lot before seeing intellij ide but after seeing this ide i personally prefer intellij ide a lot and i'm going to say cucumber basic that is the project name for now so i'm going to just say cucumber basics and i'm going to upload all these code in github so anytime you want to see any of the code it's going to be sitting in the github so please go ahead and look there in exit automations uh, github repository and the base package com.company the company is something but the execute automation so ea and i'm going to leave the project location right here in my user space and i'm going to hit finish so this is going to refresh the template and it has created a cool project structure for me and you can see that it will give you some tip of the day i really like this because this tip of the day has helped me a lot to learn intellij ide a lot I'm just going to close this for now and there we go you have a cool neat interface for your ide and it says that there is a cool quick toolbar there we go this is the toolbar and this is the one which we are interested in and you can see that it has reference the external libraries and this is your project structure the source and this is for this are some of the files related to the intellij ide so you can just leave this for now don't worry about it and this is the file let's quickly write a very very simple code as usual the system dot how dot mm, where's the intellij okay the intellij is still indexing so you can see that it's indexing meaning it takes some time to boot up the whole ide and once it is fully done you can see that it will be pretty fast enough to uh, bring you all the intelligence and i like the intelligence as well it is it's really good because it has so many features than compared to visual studio i personally prefer that because the reason is in visual studio you actually have to install the resharper to get all the different namespaces available in different dll files sometime even if you have not referenced the dll right now you can see that in the NuGet package reference but the same feature is already available in the ide the intellij ide so now we can see it's already bringing that and print i'm gonna say hello world and i can just run this right here so it's just making the project parsing the java finishing this and you can just allow it for now and you can see that there is a hello world so this is how you can create a simple project and in the next video we will try to create the cucumber project as well so that's it guys thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day